<clears throat> this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Point is verse um, 12, and it reads, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we'll start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to called Loyam La Yahawa, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kodash Barakatham. I say double honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone who teach and do rule well. I say peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so now more so than ever. I say shalom to the Akim and the Aqua out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of the other nations appearing like the other nations, but whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say shalom. It's your brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church fellow servant and I'm coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bashem Shah. and basically this lesson is um, in regards to uh, an article I've seen and it's um, befitting um, the signs of the times you know um, like the scripture said because of the, the iniquity shall abound when you go on the word iniquity is pretty much the sin upon sin and um, you know this place is completely out of out of order, you know, and it's lawless. You know, you know the laws of the heavenly Father are not being abided by, and you know, shit, they're not even abiding by the laws of this devil. So you know, because of all the sin upon sin, you know, you know, you know, scriptures talk about in the Book of Revelations about how the sins of this place is going to reach onto the heavens. You know. Um, so it's because sin is so rapid, you know, the love of many people, like the, the friendliness or, you know, the care that, you know, just for being a person, you know, like at one point in time, a man would have more regard for women and children. But right now we live in a world where you got those, you know, Israelis, you know, bombing women and children, which, you know, when you have um, different nations, they come up with basically rules for war, you know, certain things that you're not supposed to do in war, you know, but show you how this devil doesn't care about um, anyone but himself. You know, scriptures even say that. It says about how if one is evil to himself, how, uh, roughly paraphrased, if one is evil to himself, uh, basically, you know, if he's evil to himself, if he's evil to his own people, then, you know, <laughs> You two thirds and you so called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, some Indians ain't got nothing coming. And that's why, you know, you've had all these different atrocities that this red Hebrew Edomite has um, perpetuated in the earth. Fucking devil, keep on getting closer. You know, it also talks about in the book of Sirach, which I'm gonna get it, the book of Ecclesiastes, in the book of Sirach, chapter 10. Starting in verse 1, and it reads, A wise judge will instruct his people in the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Verse 2, but showing you that this devil is not prudent. You know, he's not, he doesn't really um, show forth wisdom. Although, like, that, that's how you know it's really the Heavenly Father, you know what I mean, behind, you know, pulling the strings of men. Because when you take time to think about it, like, literally, I was just reading an article that, uh, that was talking about how the military is having the trouble um, recruiting. So now they're trying to get the people that basically jump, um, basically they kicked out, forced out of the, the service because they didn't want to deal with that jump shot. Now they're trying to get them to come back. So, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that shows you the lack of wisdom right there. Like, you put something in place that didn't work out the way you expected. And now, because we have a major war brewing up, they need the, they need bodies. But what's going to happen is they're going to force a draft. You know, they haven't had a draft in years. And, you know, and, not, and, and nobody wants to go to fight. You know what I mean? So, this is going to be very interesting. Salakia, though, it says, verse 2, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. So, you know, basically, the people that rule this world, these red Hebrew Edomites, you know, the elite of Esau Edom, they are, um, you know, extremely wicked, and they are extremely um, selfish, and they're extremely bloodthirsty, all these different things. You know, the book of Micah talks about, um, 
the rich men are full of violence, you know. And, you know, that's why you're seeing, you know, the world being shaped and molded in the way it is, you know. So they're cold and heartless, so the world is going to be cold and heartless, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. You know, you got people really suffering right now. Like, I'm back on the bus. I haven't been on a bus so maybe almost a year, two years, something like that. And, you know, you've had homelessness, but you're seeing it more and more. And you always see it around the wintertime, you know. So, you know, if you got the people that's the rule in the city, they don't give a fuck about the people. <laughs> Why would, you, you know, the people in this place? Because they're, they're moving off the vibration of this place, you know what I mean? That's why wickedness is authority, you know, is, you know, perpetuated. And when righteousness is in authority, it's perpetuated. But you really go into, like, the accounts of the different kings over um, Israel, you know, Judah and Israel. Uh, but, you know, because you had the southern and northern kingdom, but the point being, when you had different kings and rulership, the people went off. When they, you had the righteous kings in rulership, you, they had the people literally on track, you know. And it's uh, different accounts of different righteous, you know, kings. But nonetheless, you know, you know, even to the point with Solomon, like with Solomon, you know, when he first came into his rulership, he was righteous. But then, you know, over the years, you know, he was corrupted through women. We were just bringing this out, you know, at our study. Well, we did a video. But nonetheless, so um, I'll bring out a little bit of this article because this is the purpose of it. And I, I just want to prove, I'm going to read one point. And, and, and the thing is, like, I've been in other states and, you know, the way of, uh, Ohio um, basically sets up how they deal with the homeless is, is, is a lot more organized than other states. But they're telling you now they don't have the funds. <laughs> It says, as winter approaches, families are living on the street while programs for the unhoused are strained in Cuyahoga County. Reads, in the seven years. It says, in the seven years, Chris Kinstrick has been leading the Northeast Ohio Coalition for the Homeless. He said he has never seen women and children sleeping on the street. He says until now. <laughs> and it says as of November 15th, the county's family shelter system has a waiting list of 47 families and the rapid rehousing program, which seeks to get people or families who are experiencing homelessness into houses or apartments, is not accepting of referrals. So that means that they're oh, they they they're not even accepting. You know, you could be in need of help and they can't help you. Yeah. And they made, you, they made me think of Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 25. Matter of fact, I'm going to get it real quick. It's Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 25, and it reads Destruction cometh and there shall so like it. Destruction cometh and they shall seek peace and there shall be none. So, you know, people are going to be waiting for a reprieve, but things are getting worse. You know, things aren't going to get better. You know, we know scriptures say that, you know. Churches talk about evil and only evil behold is come. So evil, eve time, ill, bad. Bad times is coming, you know what I mean? And then you gotta remember, like I said again, if the country broke, they trying to, you know, figure out ways to, you know, drum up revenue, you know, by creating more taxes. That's why they hired all these different tax enforcement officers and, you know, these do new AI driven tax programs you know because they they in search of money you know what I mean? like, like this shit call all you like I want you to shout which seeks to get people or families who are experiencing homelessness to housing or apartments is not accepting referrals Cuyahoga County spokesperson spokeswoman Kelly Woodard said in the email so I'm that's pretty much what I want to bring out because at the end they, that's what caught my attention you know the love of Wendy is really waxing colder you know and then these people still gonna try to participate in this wicked ass holiday known as Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you go into the whole history of that, you know, it's not even based on. Let's just to show you the, how America truly is founded on lies. You know, for centuries and generations, people thinking, "Oh yeah, Thanksgiving, two people came together that didn't know each other and sat and had a great meal together." You know, maybe I mean? again you could find out that literally the meal is based off the fact that them slaughtering. The people that actually helped them sustain themselves, you know. And, and if you listen to a so-called Native American, a Gadite or a Reubenite, 
they will tell you, you know, there's videos floating around, circulating on YouTube where you have Gadites that basically speak on it. Like, basically, this was about the slaughter of my people. You know, so, not to digress, you know, all, that, that, that's, that's the energy being drummed up into the earth. You know, because of the wickedness of this place. You know, because this place, what? It walked in great pride. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter um, 8. It started 49, point is 50. And it reads, in, I'm going to start at um, verse 48. Second Ezra 48. So, so like in Second Ezra 8 and 48. It says, in this also... Thou art marvelous before the Most High. Verse 49. In that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and hast not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. Verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. So, you know, it was going into Ezra, basically was humble. And, you know, and that's what the Most High deals with. He deals with the meek and the humble. But, you know, it talks about, you know, because of the great pride of this people, this place is going to be trouble. You know, for many great miseries shall be done to them that dwell in the latter time. What's Salakia? That in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. And the scriptures talk about how the Most High hated pride. You know, the sixth thing the Most High hates, and I believe pride is like the second. So, you know, you got to see even more atrocities, you know what I mean? Like, it's nothing like seeing the suffering of a a, a, a woman or children. And then, you know, uh, like, I was listening to just something that just Charleston White just said. He was like, you know, don't throw away your life for no bitch. You know, he was like, you'd be better off throwing your w life away for a prostitute. At least she'll give you some pussy. <laughs> you know, bear with me for a second. So, like, yeah. So, Khan, basically, because of the pride of this place, the Lord is going to trouble it. You know, and again, there's nothing like seeing a woman or a child suffer. You know, it's spiritual because the brother was going into being emotional and how the times we coming into um, how you're going to have to be less emotional. You know, the, the, the Lord, the Abba Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh is going to put a cold spirit on his men in that day. You know, because, you know, the mindset of, you know, the Most High's men, you know, the prophet, he don't give a fuck about, you know, just like the Allah Hayim, the angels. They don't care about, you know, what man think or, you know, they care about pleasing the Heavenly Father. You know, you know we were what the hell about Shemal Shah's with, you know. Because at the end of the day, you know, like with Isaiah chapter 26 goes into about, um, you know, how we um, look forward to the judgments of the Most High. Because we understand how wicked this place is. You know what I mean? You know, and in order for us to receive our inheritance to get, you know, the kingdom, we must suffer these things. You know, which is going to be a lot of death and destruction. It's the book of... Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, start at verse 1, and it reads, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. So when you go into that word perilous, it goes into basically dangerous or, or fierce. You know, um, I believe I've seen savage, but meaning it's going to be violence. You know, it's going to be, you know, it's going it's to it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be hard out here. You know, brothers is going into, you know, you know, I'm with the GMS Cleveland camp, but, you know, I grew up in a city called East Cleveland. And if you do any history on that place, literally that was where, you know, when the Rockefeller family, they became billionaires. So they stayed out there for, I think, a year, you know. And, um, you know when you take the time to imagine this man's wealth, you know, like his backyard was the park system. You know what I mean? Like, so when he left, they donated that land. But, you know, this is one of the most wealthiest cities in the country at one point, and now it's like the one of the most impoverished areas in the whole country, you know. And you could try to fathom on well, why is that? Because of the wickedness this devil did. And you got to remember, they've only been there; they only lived there for a year. Now you'd be a fool to think that they don't still own shit. They own the fucking world, you know. They like, I'm sure, you know. You got to remember, these people don't have to walk around with passports and shit like that. That is things that they make you do, you know. 
I, I think it was, I can't remember what movie it was, but, you know, like, I think it was like one of them rush hours where an individual had diplomatic immunity. You know, they, he didn't have to answer certain things. He didn't have to do certain things because he was above, you know, the average every day. But, um, you know, when you go into that word, um, again, perilous, it goes into dangerous or fierce or savage. And it also goes into hard, to do, hard to bear. So it's going to be hard to survive, hard to live, hard to take care of your family, you know what I mean? Because we seeing all these things with this inflation that's, you know, it's, it's truly like when you really meditate on that scripture about um, evil and only evil coming, like you can see it, you know. Brothers was talking about the dark winter. You know, this look like this might be that dark winter because you got a lot of people losing their jobs. You you know, they talk about the heating bill might be even more expensive than it was years prior. They talk about it's going to be a colder winter because, you know, the El Nino. <laughs> so it's like a perfect storm that the Most High Yahweh Shemiel is, you know, sending to Babylon the Great. Verse 2, for men shall be lovers, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, Boasters, proud, <laughs> back into that word proud, right? Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. You know, you got ungrateful people. You got, um, you know, I'm going to just go into like, you know, you got me and then learn from our elders or our apostles, the men of the great millstone, you know, and then, you know, they come in with another doctrine or, you know, for whatever reason, they fall out and then they become scoffers. You know what I mean? You know, you got to question that sometimes too. Like that doesn't really just come overnight. I mean, yeah, it's spiritual. You know, but then it's like, in my opinion, speaking as a man, some individuals didn't fully, weren't fully persuaded by the truth in the first place. You know, you got certain men saying certain men weren't certain men, but you believed it at one point or you didn't speak up on it then. You should have, you know, you should have made that known that you didn't agree or believe that at the beginning. Why? You know, then you wasn't fully rooted. You know what I mean? Like. And, 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 and the elder apostle Tahar continuously keeps speaking about a, it's going to be a major shakeup, and I can see that I mean look at what everybody did well you had me in a still firm and didn't care but you know that was just you know you know, like that first round in a boxing match you know that was just a filler round you know what I mean you, you know this ultimate test is when they literally you know put us all in the situation of that hour of temptation you know when you are put in a situation do you accept this or do you you know Stand for Yahabashim, you know I mean? or do you stand fully for Yahabashim Yahusha and reject it? You know, um, verse three, without natural affection, and it's going into fierce, dangerous. You know, and, and, and back to the beginning of the lesson. You know, what I mean, like nobody, you know, natural affection is like just like you know, caring for a person. You know, like back in the day when. Um, you know, you would see what well, you see on shows. Like, I've never really seen it in, in, in person, you know, in real life, a person helping an old lady across the street. I've seen it on videos, you know, uh, but I can't recall actually really seeing that. But, you know, you know that was natural affection, you know what I mean? That's somebody's mother, you know, why not help them? You know, uh, older Jake, you know, that's what, you know, I know my generation was raised up more so, you know, to be accustomed to, but now this new generation, that's why the elder apostle, um, the bark, the like the elder apostle, um, <laughs> calls them um, GMO babies, you know what I mean? You know, the way they think, they, the way they're thinking is all fucked up, you know? you know, And not just the younger generation, because, you know, just recently I ran into an old, old 70, old wine bottle. I mean, this nigga literally, and I'm like, man, he, I'm like, that man, 60 years old, this dude, like, I'm 70. I'm like, so that make it even worse if you thinking, like, the fuck you supposed, to have, you supposed to be leading by example. So, like, our nation is really truly destroyed, and that's why we so, you know, humbly and sincerely are are begging the Lord to, you know, you know, make these things come to pass. Because, like I said, if, I mean, like, I mean, you know, and the, the, the sad and the most killing part about it is a lot of our people, that's the two thirds, are with this shit, you know, you know, do you not know that you're not really even living? You're just alive in misery? It says, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. And when you go into incontinence, it basically goes into um, a lack of restraint. You know, lawless. Fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the... Uh, 
lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the most high. And you see that now. People, you know, do as thou wilt. They don't care about following the laws, such as commandments of the most high, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shem. You know, people are rebellious. And the sin of a rebellion or the sin of rebellions is as the sin of witchcraft, roughly paraphrased. Which witchcraft comes with what? The penalty is death. You know, and when you look at all those things that were said to be happening in the last days, literally, we are seeing all that before our eyes. This is the, the state and the mindset of the people. So, you know, that, that, that is a tool to measure what times we're in. We are in the last days. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14. I'm going to start at verse 14 because at the end of the day, you know, these things were written before, you know, you know, the war was formed. This this was how the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua wanted things. Because ultimately, you know, those that are able to endure and overcome, you know, this huge test that Yahweh Bashim is about to put the whole world through are going to be seen as the most highs elect. You know, those are his true followers. Scriptures talk about um I believe it's in the book of John or how there's going to be time for the true worshipers to worship in both spirit and in both truth. So if you say you are a true follower, we about to see that. Verse um, 14, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature. You know, so we are going to be put in positions where you may have to become homeless for this truth's sake. You know, I, I know individuals that have, you know. You know, I, I know, you know, that's the thing, you know, a brother might, you know, like, like offend you or, or irk you or do something that, you know, bothers you. But at the end of the day, you, you should be able to, you know, look past it and overcome it because of the fact we all in the same struggle together. You know, that's what makes this a true brotherhood, you know what I mean? Brothers might not all agree or be into the same things, but the one thing that we all agree in our into is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, and we all agree that this place is wicked, you know. you know. And that's, you know, what I'm truly for all the sincere believers, you know, because the Lord gonna weed out the fakes and the phonies, you know what I mean? And like I said, you're gonna be tested to show how you truly believe and love Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Verse 15, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy onto thee and haste thee to flee from these times, because at the end of the day, you know, you like I said again about how um, you gotta basically like the brother was going to have a I don't give a fuck attitude, except for pleasing y'all about you know, you know that's what made the men of oh our forefathers and ancient prophets so austere. You know, Yahweh Shah was like that. I mean, perfect. That's the most perfect example you can use. You know, Yahweh Shah didn't give a fuck about nothing but his disciples, the followers of the Most High, and the Most High or reverse that the most high and then you know his disciples and the followers of the most high and doing the will and the work of him that sent him you know verse 16 the point for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter so you know it's going to be worse times than you've ever seen before and like i said we know history and know the type of atrocities and things that took place but scriptures talk about jacob's trouble is going to be like no time like none other so Prepare for real, true suffering, you know. But those that tr truly believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, they're gonna be protected and nurtured and, 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 and protected in that day, you know. And it's enough scriptures to comfort you with that. Isaiah 65, Psalm 91, you know. You know. Jeremiah chapter 17 says, "Blessed is he that trusteth in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah." You know, cursed be him that trusteth in man, <laughs> you know. So you know. At the end of the day, because you got to understand again, this was already written, you know. So, if you're so called Black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the laws, the statutes, and to the commandments of your power, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, or you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Loyum, La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim. Double honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim. 
across the four corners of the earth pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so now more than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwa, that they're listening and learning, Lord willing, we have some fun. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations appearing like the other nations been subscribing to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Until next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. I'm going to say Shalom, Shalom. Name of Wath, Lababoah, Shalom.